spiritual practice or enlightenment practice entails going beyond all the parameters by which we discriminate within the pure experiencing. All these parameters are notional. We've got notions of a personal identity, notions of a world out there, notions of birth and death. But enlightenment practice means coming back to Brahman, coming back to Brahman, which is described here as pure existence. It could be described as pure being, pure becoming, or I, I prefer to call it simply experiencing, pure experiencing. And this is all that's happening. The world is pure experience too. We're established in a situation of absolute anarchy. We are absolutely free. We're free of all these discriminations. Discriminations between real and imaginary. Whom do injunctions and prohibitions affect? No matter how we lead our life, in everyday society. Internally, we are not judging ourselves. Internally, we are totally free, totally accepting, totally open. The illusory power, known as Maya alone, is the subject of discussion and argument and argumentation. It is and it is not. This is how our cognitive process works. We want to know what is real and what is unreal. Clearly this is a very important thing to be able to do, but spiritually we need to go beyond it. We need to go beyond our anxieties about establishing what is real and what is unreal. In the realization of Brahman there is only this pure experiencing. We do not need to make any judgments about it. We do not need to make any discriminations within it. Therefore, such disputation is extended by ignorant people to Brahman or the infinite consciousness. So if you hear about Brahman, you might be wondering about Brahman. Is Brahman God? Is Brahman this or that? Sometimes it's said to exist. Sometimes it's said to be non-existent. Sometimes it's said to be neither. We don't get into any discussions about Brahman. To do so would be like asking somebody for directions. And if they point in a particular direction, you start asking them about their finger for further clarification. You really want to understand how to get there, so you start asking them about their finger. That's what it means to be talking about Brahman. Brahman, the word Brahman is only a pointer. The whole Yoga Vasishta is only a pointer. It's a pointer to our essential nature. It's a pointer to the awareness by which you're hearing this, by which you might be seeing this. That's what it's a pointer to. To those who know the truth or the supreme state, the states of waking, dream and sleep do not exist at all. These are the other discriminations that we make. We discriminate between waking and dream. And sleep refers to deep sleep. Earlier in this chapter we heard how, when coming out of deep sleep, we thrash around looking to remind ourselves of our identity, of who we are, and of where we are. We establish these two parameters as soon as we come out of deep sleep. But again, we cannot say there's any such thing as deep sleep. There is only what is going on now. We've only got the notion of deep sleep. It's not even an experience. Deep sleep isn't even an experience. It's an experience that we conjure up in retrospect. 
So we create this memory, what is no more than a memory, of a non-experience and call it an experience, the experience of deep sleep. How unreal is that? Whatever it is, is as it is. And this is the pure experiencing. The dream world, as also the world which one sees in his own imagination, is not real, even though they are experienced to be so for the time being. We only say that a dream is unreal subsequently. At the, at the time, the dream is extremely vivid, even though we might completely forget about it a short time later. Even so, in the beginning of this world creation, it did not exist or come into being. At the beginning of this world creation, we can understand as that moment when we come out of deep sleep. But really, that's just a memory, a contrivance. There's no beginning to what is happening. There's only consciousness creating its stories. When thus the world is realized as pure consciousness, then it is not an object of perception. It's a realization. Therefore, there is no subject or observer either. There is no experience or experiencer. The experiencer is the identity which we latch on to. The experience is the locality that we latch on to. But really this is just consciousness doing its thing. All we can really say is that there is only the field of experiencing or the stream of experiencing or simply experiencing. <laughs>